Knots are one of the trickier bushcraft and outdoor skills to learn. It requires quite a lot of memorization. They aren't necessarily as intuitive as you would like. And a lot of people find the, the mental images of how to construct a knot difficult. But don't worry, I am here to help. In this video, we will look at four different techniques to help ingrain knots in your memory and also teach them effectively. Tip number one is to break down the knot into its constituent parts. It's kind of like how you can follow a recipe and get a dish out of the result. If you follow a recipe step by step, chances are you will get a tasty meal at the end of it. But to be a really good cook, you have to understand the interactions of all the different ingredients. Why does this, why is there onion and garlic in this recipe? Would I be able to substitute with ginger? And um, answer, well, no, it's no. But what if I add in shallots instead of brown onions? Does that make a difference? And the same thing applies to knots. To understand how a knot fits together, is to take it apart bit by bit and have a look at why each position is in a certain way. Once we really get to that granular uh, understanding of why there's a bend here, a loop there, then we really can head towards mastery of the knot. As an example, here is a bowline. bowline. So, to start off with, just, just follow a knot tying video. There are plenty out there. I do have one on this particular knot, which I'll link up above. Just follow it through and then tie the knot. Once you've tied the knot, then you can just gently pull it apart a little bit. And we can see right here, we've got a loop that comes around our standing end and then folds back on ourselves. So that's one loop. And then we can see right here, we've got this loop that comes round and crosses over itself. So what we're really looking at is two separate loops that then fit through each other. So this loop comes around that loop and is prevented from traveling all the way back by the standing end. This means that if I were to tie the knot differently, you can see that still works, even though it's no longer a true bowline. But if I were then to tie it a different way, can see that it doesn't work because I haven't created that same loop there that's then held in place by this loop because this loop is just free floating. So really understanding how a knot fits together will give you ideas on how to prove it. So we can see we can tie a bowline like this and just put it through and we have our two loops. Now we know what a bowline looks like. Breaking it down into the simplest terms, so if I were to be tying the knot, go okay I need to make one loop first and that loop needs to cross over. Then I can see that I need to create another loop that goes around the back of this. So if I come 
down through there and then come up through there, you can see that doesn't work. If I were to fold it over the other way, bring it down, put it around, see we've got one loop, it goes through and then obviously it needs to come back on itself. And there we go, we have a bowline. By breaking down a notch in this way, not only does it help us troubleshoot our own problems, it means that when we're then working with learners, we can more easily see where they went wrong. Oh, you went on this side of the line rather than that side. You haven't tightened this loop properly. And it allows us to guide people through the learning process and correct problems. Tip number two is to tell a story or use a mnemonic. This works especially well with younger children but it's a great way to remember things. As human beings we are very good at remembering stories and things that make sense. For example, I was teaching orienteering just the other day and I, the children were getting a little bit confused with the point of the compass. And I said, well, there's, there's a mnemonic that I learned in school, as never eat shredded wheat. And one of the parents went, oh yes, I remember that. Does anyone else remember my early morning jam sandwiches usually nauseate people? These things, this is like 25 years ago now uh, that I'd learned these things, yet they're still stuck in my mind. So telling a story helps us fix the steps that we need to know. So for the round turn ridge line knot, which my children now call the rabbit knot because of the story that I tell, you go, rabbit goes round the tree. The rabbit being this bundle of rope. And then the rabbit will jump over the line. The rabbit then gets scared and runs back the way he came around the tree. Oh look, he reaches the line again, jumps over, sees a scary thing, and goes back the other way. See, really simple, because the most important thing with this tensioning knot is to reverse direction. So once you've crossed over the standing line, you need to go back the other way. So the idea of a rabbit being scared, and when an animal's scared, it runs away from what's scary and back the way it came and goes around the tree. So just about fixing that mental image of the rabbit jumping over the tree or jumping over the line and then getting scared helps children make sense of this and it can help us with adults as well. Another one that is really common that you know, half of you have probably seen during forest school training whatever is the Sammy the Snake where you teach a timber hitch by comes round, jumps over itself and then comes back in loops to tighten it. It's a really helpful in helping us remember the steps and the process for tying a knot. So come up with a story, make, make it relevant to yourself and then use it, use it often, talk to others about it, write it down and you'll remember the knot so much better. Tip number three is to make it kinesthetic. They, we, we've all heard the term muscle memory. It's when you do something a certain way often enough, your body almost seems to remember the way it happened. If, you're, if the way you tie knots is very mechanical and you're just like that one, that one, that one, just over and you're not really involving your whole body and your whole arm you're missing out on an opportunity to utilize one of your body's ways of remembering things effectively. Once you've done something often enough, once you've moved your body in a certain way, it remembers it. So if we, if we move our body in a certain way every time we tie a knot, then it starts getting ingrained. And it's almost like we can do it without th even thinking. So see how you can break down the knot in such a way that the tying of it becomes a repetitive motion 
the motion of the hands, like when we're tying the vink hitch, you move, wave goodbye, grab and pull. It's a very, I can, even without a rope here, I can still fix it in my mind. I can still remember you start with palm up, then you rotate, fingers to the floor, fingers to the, to the sky, wave goodbye, reach through, and there we go, we've got our knot. Looking at the clove hitch as a example of what we can do with kinesthetic knot is we start with left hand palm up, right hand palm down. We'll just go reverse it. So right hand to palm up, left hand to palm down. Then first loop goes over second loop and we pull it tight. So it creates that motion, you flick behind, you flick on top, one over the other, and in. Just by making that motion again and again, we can get faster and faster. That technique is especially valuable for the children that do struggle with the mental load of learning a knot. That too much up here and not enough in their hands. So it's really valuable to be able to approach it differently for different individuals, to be able to go, okay, this, this person needs to know a story. This person needs to know how the knot works. And this person over here just needs to do it and just needs to move their hands, move their body and work it out. So any knot you, you learn, any knot you come across, you can use this, these techniques. Just keep thinking about different ways to approach the knot. For my final tip, which almost isn't even a tip really, is practice. It is the one thing that most people fail on with knots, is they don't give themselves enough time to practice the knots properly. Really, you do need many, many repetitions of a particular knot. If you don't tie that knot on a regular basis, week in, week out, you are not going to be able to remember it unless you've learnt it really well in a short period. So, practice the knots often. Well, I always have some cordage in my pocket. It's incredibly handy to have, first of all. Secondly, any time where I'm just sitting there rather than scrolling through my phone I can pull out a bit of cordage and I can just have a go see if I can remember some of those knots that I learnt in a, a previous session and just like that I can have a bit of a fiddle and go okay there we go Bolin I do remember how to do it so I kind of overstate how important this is practice is essential to learning knots well, there you go. I hope you found that valuable and I hope this is giving you the tips and techniques you need to learn knots more effectively. If you'd like some more help along the route of your knot tying journey, then do check out my brand new online course, which is top, Essential Tops and Knots for Outdoor Leaders, which will guide you through all of the knots you need to have in your toolbox to be able to put up top shelters, you know, set up tripods, be able to do all sorts of things in your sessions and all using these sort of techniques that I've shown in this video. I will leave a link to that in the description below. Before I go, just want to say a big thank you to Wellness Woodlands for, for making this video possible. Without their support in letting me film in this beautiful location, um, these videos would be a lot harder to make. Moment, we you can probably hear we've got some sheep in the background that are getting the grass pitches prepared uh, using uh, animal power to get it all mown and ready for opening soon. So, if you're looking for a camping experience not far from Butley and a spitting distance from the wire forest, then I do recommend checking them out again. Link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to make the most of every day. I'll see you in the next video.